Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia here with a project for tailored expressions. In today's video, I'm going to be using products from the new Sunshine and Rainbows release to create six colorful cards perfect for birthday celebrations. For my cards today from the new release goodies, I will be using the Rainbow Bright 3 die, the yellow glitter cardstock, and a rainbow of enamel dots in Cherry Pop, Candy Corn, Lemon Meringue, Granny Smith, Cookie Monster, and Jelly Donut. I will be using cardstocks in those same colors, except instead of Cherry Pop, I did choose Watermelon. I will also be adding on some Sugar Cube, Oreo, and Tailored Expressions Vellum. For my sentiments, I will be using the It's Your Day Red Rubber Stamp Set with Coordinating Dies and the Mini Strips Birthday Stamp Set with the Coordinating Die. I will be stamping these and heat embossing with Sugar Cube Ink and White Detail Embossing Powder. So I got that out along with my Misty, my Anti-Static Powder Tool, and the Just Press Tool. To cut my layers, I am using a variety of stacklets and the individual sets will be listed in the description box below. I will also be using an array of adhesives to hold everything together. Let's get crafty! To get started, I will be using the Rainbow Bright 3 die on each of my colored cardstocks, which I cut down to 4 by 6 inches. Now, for some of my cards today, I'll need a little bit longer than the 5.5 inches for the glitter cardstock, so I also cut a piece of lemon meringue cardstock in the same size. I took these all off camera to die cut. I won't show you that, but I do want to show you how I keep all of my arcs together after die cutting. And that is using a little bit of post-it tape to hold the die cut pieces together while I remove it from the die. Now that everything is die cut, let's start putting some card fronts together. For the first one, I have a piece of sugar cube that is five and a half by four and a quarter. I'm gonna tack that down to my paper mat just to help it stay in place while I'm adding my arcs. Before I got started, I brought one full rainbow over to my cardstock to get a good idea of what the placement needed to be so there was even white on the top and bottom. Once I got that figured out, I made a little mark on the graph paper where I wanted those arcs to start. And then I chose one arc from each of the colors and I'm going to start adding these with liquid glue. Now the reason I use liquid glue is I want a little bit of wiggle time because especially with this first arc, placement is important and you might have to move it around just a little bit. So for the purple one, I lined up the bottom of the piece on the left with that pen mark that I put on the grid paper. Now once that was in place, I added the remaining arcs in order, making sure to get good coverage with the glue and get it adhered right up next to the previous arc. Here's a look at all six of the colors on the first card front. Once all of the arcs were in place, I put this piece to the side to let it dry completely. And now for card front number two, I'm using Sugar Cube once again in that same A2 size. For this second card front, I will again be using six of the arcs, but instead of placing them right up next to each other, I'm going to give them a little space. So I went in and I grabbed the colors. Now you will notice this one, it starts with purple instead of red, but you know what? It is still colorful and fun. I spread them out a little bit once again to get an idea of where I want them to start and stop. And again, I use a little mark on that grid paper so when I go to put the adhesive on, I know where to place that first piece. Speaking of adhering the first piece, that is what I did. Once again, I want to make sure I get this piece exactly where I want it so that when I go to place the remaining arcs, they are all lined up. Now for the second arc, the green one, instead of putting it right up against the Cookie Monster one, I am leaving just probably about an eighth of an inch. So as I lay it down from left to right, I try to keep that little white opening uniform. 
I continued adding each of the colors until the card front was filled and here is a look at that finished which once again I'm just going to set to the side to let it dry completely. Card front number three is the same size as the two previous but for this I'm going to be turning it portrait or vertical. I'm going to add two rainbows, so I start by choosing six arcs for the top one, and once I have those, I'm going to use a liquid glue and align these with the left edge of the cardstock toward the top. Again, that very first one is the most important to get in place. Now make sure here too not to put too much glue over far to the right. Learn from me and do not adhere your arcs to the grid paper below it. Once the first rainbow is in place, I rotated my piece 180 degrees and I put on the second rainbow, once again aligning it with the left edge of the cardstock. I just thought this was a fun way to use up a couple more of the rainbows and give a little bit of a different look. At this point, I was down to two final rainbows, so I went ahead and put those together with some of the post-it tape. Card front number four is going to end up being a mini slim, and I cut the piece of sugar cube to five and three quarters inches wide by three and a quarter inches tall. Now, because for this one, my yellow glitter arc is a little too short, I am going to replace it with one of the lemon meringue die cuts. Then, just like before, I'm going to kind of figure out where the arc should go on the cardstock, and then I'm going to start adding each of the arcs with the liquid glue. For this size, the arcs are exactly the five and three quarters inches wide. So once again, placement of that first arc, in this case, it is a lemon meringue, is very important. Then you're just gonna keep adding the arcs right up against that first one until the card front is filled. Card front number five is a piece of sugar cube that is five and a half inches by two and three quarters. This is actually gonna end up being a two for project. Once again, the glitter cardstock arc was a little bit too short for this, so I replaced it with its lemon meringue copy. Then, just like with the previous card fronts, I used liquid glue to get these placed onto my sugar cube piece. Now, for this one, I did have to angle it just a little bit so it filled the width better. Here's a look at all of those arcs on there. Once everything had dried completely, I brought in some non-stick scissors and cut off the overhang. And now I have five card fronts that I'm going to show you how to turn in to six total cards. Before I start putting the cards together and decorating them, I wanted to get all of the stamping done. So I brought in a large scrap of Oreo cardstock, got all of my sentiment stamps set up on that piece, and then prepped it with the anti-static powder tool before using the sugar cube ink and the white detail embossing powder. Because my ink pad is a little dry, I did stamp it twice, and you'll see here that once I add the powder and heat set it, I have some great black and white sentiments for my cards. Once I had the sentiments all die cut, it was time to start putting the card fronts together. For this first one, it's the mini slim size, and I used the largest petite scallop mini stacklet with the Oreo, and I cut down my rainbow piece with the largest stitch mini slimline stacklet. For the card base, I just made a sugar cube mini slimline. This next card front is the twofer, and for this, I'm going to cut it into two pieces that are two and five eighths inch square. Now, when you have both of those cut down, you are free to rotate these for your final card fronts, which are going to be three by three note cards. To put these together, I used the third from largest stitch square stacklet for the Oreo, and I made my own three by three sugar cube card bases. I adhered all of those layers, and aren't these so cute? I think they would be perfect to give with a gift or maybe a little fun lunchbox note. For the next card front, which uses the double rainbow piece, I created an Oreo mat using the second from largest A2 layer stacklet, and from the center of that, I used the second largest frame and frame die to make a frame which I put some vellum in the center of. For my rainbow piece, I used the third from largest A2 layer stacklet to cut it down. 
I'm not going to completely finish the card base right now, but I did add the Oreo map to the rainbow piece and added that to the front of a top fold sugar cube card base. You saw a little bit ago that I put foam sticky strips on the back of my frame and for now because I'm going to add a little bit more foam later, I'm going to set the frame and the card front to the side. For the next card front, which had the arc separated by a little bit of white, I used the third from largest A2 layer stacklet on the rainbow piece and I also used the second largest stitch circle stacklet for the circle. Now from Oreo, once again, I used the second largest from the A2 layer stacklet, and then I ended up using the third largest stitch circle stacklet. You can see that I started by using the second largest, but I didn't like how big the black mat was, so I ended up going with the third largest. I put the rainbow piece, which was matted, onto my sugar cube card base, and then I layered together the two circles. Now on the black circle, I did add some foam tape for dimension before adhering the rainbow to the center. And I just did my best to line it up on there so the arcs flowed right across that opening. For the final card front, which was actually the first one I created, I cut the rainbow piece with the largest stitched rectangle stacklet and my Oreo frame with the largest petite scallop rectangle stacklet. These got layered together and added to a sugar cube card base and off to the side there you'll see that I have already added one of the sentiments to a vellum circle which I cut with the fourth from largest stitch circle stacklet. Now I did want to pop this up a little bit so I added some foam sticky strips off camera and once I have that added to the card front I added a little additional sentiment here from the mini strips birthday, added it partially with sticky strips and with a little liquid glue. I finished adding sentiments to each of the card fronts off camera using a variety of foam tape and liquid glue and then I brought in that rainbow of enamel dots and added some to the front of each card. Now while you won't see me decorate each one, here is a close up look at each of the six finished cards. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch today's video. If you enjoyed the process, a thumbs up is appreciated. And if you're not already a subscriber, we do hope you'll click on the button below so you're the first to know about our latest videos. To find out more about the products I used today, you can check out the links in the description box below or visit the Tailored Expressions online store at tailoredexpressions.com.